Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We're looking at the UART serial communication peripheral on the MSP430. And in this video, we're going to look at trying to set the baud rate. So remember that this is the block diagram of the uh, UART peripheral. And up here, you know, you're going to, this circuitry up here is going to help generate a clock that's used by the shift register that achieves these common baud rates, such as 9600, 19200, 38. And the way that it works is you select a clock as your source, and that's going to be called BR clock, <clears throat> or bit rate clock or baud rate clock. But then you're going to try to divide that down, and you're going to divide it down to try to get one of these values. The trick becomes, since these are these values are set by kind of the standard that everybody agreed these are the numbers we're going to use, what happens is that you're not always able to divide down and get exactly these numbers. So this baud rate generator circuit has the ability to do some things such as divide it down and then apply some error correction to try to get as close as you possibly can to uh, these values. But So what this video is about is trying to show you how you come up with the values that go in these uh, UCAX BRW register, which is the prescale slash divider. This is going to be a number that is a divider. So it's like whatever clock source you choose, you're going to divide it down to get as close as you can to this value. And then you're going to apply what they call a modulation uh, setting, which is going to try to attempt to basically add some timing or take away timing to the clock that you got from the divider and get it as close as possible to these values. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with the baud rate control register. This, like I said, it's a prescale setting, which means you're gonna divide the incoming clock by whatever value you put in here. And you actually put a, a, a like an integer value in here. So if you wanna divide by two, you actually write two to this register. If you wanna divide by eight, you write eight to it. <clears throat> and you, you just store to it, it's pretty simple. So let's do a calculation and try to see how close we can get using just the prescaler, and then look at what kind of error we see when we actually look at the bitstream itself. So let's just, let's just say that we chose the SM clock as our uh, clock source, and that's one megahertz. So what I mean there is I went into this multiplexer setting and I chose SM clock. So I have 100, or I have one megahertz coming into the baud rate generator. And I decide I want to try to achieve 115,200 as my baud rate. <clears throat> so to calculate the integer that I'm going to put in the baud rate control word register, I take the frequency that I have and I divide it by, well, basically the way to think about it is the, desire, the frequency you're going to get is going to be the frequency of the clock divided by the integer. But since I want to solve for the integer, I move the integer over here and I put desired baud rate down here. So I have one megahertz divided by 115,200. That gives me a number of 8.668. And so I would take the number eight and actually write it to the baud rate control word register. Now, <clears throat> that's cool, right? I mean, that's the prescaler. And, and if I did that, I would get a clock that comes out of the baud rate generator of 125 baud, okay? So if I look at this picture, I'm not getting exactly 115,200. I would get 125 baud coming to this. And my question is, do I even need to do the modulation stuff or can I just live with this clock that's kind of off, okay? So let's take a look at what happens. <clears throat> if I wanna know how much error I have, I basically take the number I have minus what I wanted over what I wanted, and that gives me a percentage. So I basically, I get about 8.5% error. And that error is with respect to, I wanted 115,200, that was the agreed upon rate, so I told the receiver, hey, set up to 115,200, and then I sent at 125K. And it's, the receiver's is like, well, all right, you told me 115,200, let's see if I can recover it. So let's take a look at what the bit streams might look at. First, let's, let's draw out the intended uh, bit stream at 115,200. So the bit period for 115,200, if you do one over that, it's going to be 8.68 microseconds. <clears throat> so that means every bit is exactly 8.68 microseconds. If I do just a normal frame, which means I do a start bit, and then I follow it with eight bits, and then I have a stop bit, 
the entire thing <clears throat> is going to take 86.8 .8 microseconds. So that's 10 serial bits that go. So that's start bit, 8, and then plus a stop bit. If I then look at what I actually would send, which is going to be a bit period of 8 microseconds, and that comes from what I actually got by dividing my 1 megahertz clock by 8 and not applying the, the modulation, I get 1 over 125K, and that comes out to be 8 microseconds. So that 8 microseconds corresponds to the bit period of what I'm actually sending, okay? So now if I extend that out and I look at, you know, start bit, 8 bits, and then a stop bit, that total time is 80 microseconds. So the top, the top transmitted was what was supposed to be sent when we set up our UART to use 115.200. The receiver is expecting this amount of timing. And remember, the receiver, once it sees a start bit, it's going to start sampling, and it's going to try to count out 16. It's going to have an oversampling clock, which is 16 times the baud rate clock, and it's going to try to go out 16 and then go 8 clocks, and it's going to sample right here. And you can notice that even in the first bit period, if I go, I wanted to sample right here, the receiver sampling right here, and I move down, you're, you're still in bit zero. So you can get bit zero. But the problem is look how close you are to moving into bit one. So you can almost see the timing error starting to, to affect us. Let's go see what bit one would be. So here's where the receivers was expecting to see bit one, and it would sample right here. If I go down, boy, I'm right on the hairy edge there. It's like, yeah, you might get that. If I go to bit two, and I go down, you're right in between bit two, bit three. I don't know if you're going to get the right value. If I go to bit three, here's where it samples. I'm already into bit four. So I'm already going to start seeing errors in the data transmission in halfway through. If I extend that and I go all the way over and I'm, I'm right here in bit six, I go down, I'm actually going to get the whatever value or symbol was in bit seven. And then the receiver is still sampling. It thinks that the last bit should be arriving right here. So it samples and you're already into the stop bit. So you're already sending information that you can't even get, you can't even get four of these bits to reliably transfer because you've generated a clock which wasn't what the receiver was expecting. So the answer to this is that we can't just use the prescaler. It doesn't get us close enough to these agreed upon baud rates for the UART standard. So what do we do? <clears throat> well, we apply a modulation. So the modulation is essentially, it dynamically adds and subtracts uh, bit rate clock periods to the baud rate. And now the bit rate clock period, remember, that's what comes into the baud rate generator. So it's not the 125K, it's actually the one megahertz in our example. One megahertz, uh, if you look at this picture, if I choose SM clock and have one megahertz, one over that is one microsecond. So one microsecond is really small. And so if I look at this timing diagram, each bit period is 8.67 microseconds. I can actually try to add little microseconds to the bit periods and try to stretch these things out, stretch each bit period out. And by doing that, I can basically take this original 125K and I can slow it down so that it gets as close as possible to 115.200. And I do it by, by dynamically adding these bit rate periods, okay? And that's how you do it. Now, that's straightforward. <clears throat> what isn't straightforward is that now we get into a situation where you are going to start looking at the modulation control register. And it turns out there's actually two modulation stages <laughs> and you have two modes. So the first mode is going to be low frequency baud rate generation. And this is used for baud rates that are less than or equal to one third of the bit rate clock, baud rate clock, while an oversampling is used for in, while the oversampling baud rate generation is used for higher ratios, okay? So you do low frequency or oversampling. And here is the bit that you use to set that. So it's in this modulation control word, it's this UCOS16, that stands for oversampling mode, either enable it or disable it. And depending on that setting, it's gonna dictate how you put in the settings for the modulation stage, okay? <clears throat> All right, so now let's see how this works. You basically come up with settings that go in there, and if you go look in the data sheet, the data sheet, and this is for the device specific one because that's where you finally know that SM clock and A clock are one megahertz and 32K, 
respectively, they give you a monster table, okay? A monster table that looks like this. Actually, sorry, it's, it's in the family user's guide, so the monster data sheet. But if you go out and you look down here in the, you know, EUSCI for A, what you'll see is you'll see this section where it's called setting the baud rate, and it talks about how you set this up. So just like what we just talked about, you calculate the N, the prescaler value, by taking the frequency of your incoming clock divided by the baud rate. But then here's what happens. Depending on the value you get, the integer value, if it's greater than 16, what happens is that you jump down here and you put this into the oversampling mode. So you're in the high frequency. Otherwise, what you do is you consider it into low frequency mode. Okay. And then you would change the bit. You would leave OS 16 at zero. So it's not just as simple as just finding what you divide the clock rate by. What you have to do is you have to find out what the divider ratio is. Then you decide what mode you're in. And then you actually, they just tell you flat out, depending on which mode you're in and what uh, your clock frequencies are, you go and you look, go into this huge lookup table to find out how to, uh, <clears throat> to find out what settings you're supposed to use for the modulation registers. So it's not necessarily something you calculate, but it's basically something you look up. No, that's fine, as long as we know where to look. So if you come in here, they basically say, okay, if you have a fractional part of something you come into here and you would look it up in here and you would find out what your setting is gonna be. So for us, you know, like in our example, let's, let's do our example. So we come in here and we go, here's our example. We came up with eight and our fractional part was 0.68. So then if we go into this table, it's like eight was higher, eight was higher. Oh, it's not, it's not, so we're in low frequency. So we would leave OS 16 at zero and then we come down here and we have 0.68. So we're kind of sitting around here Oh, we have 0.66 and 0.7. So I would choose D8 or D6 to put in the modulation register. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Okay, that's it. That's all you do. And there's just a ton of information in here about how this works. Uh, for typical baud rates, if you look in here, this is a big table in the monster data sheet and they give you common data rates. Okay, so they give you common clocks. So you see a clock, which is 32K, they have 100 megahertz. And then they say, well, you might have 104, you might have four megahertz, you might have this, eight megahertz. This, this remember this is in the monster data sheet. So this is covering all the MSP 430s. And so they give you all these settings and they say, if you wanted to achieve a baud rate of this, and this is your incoming clock, here's the settings. So let's go look at the one we were trying to do. So I want, one megahertz and I wanted 115, 200. So since I do that divider, I would put, I would leave the USOS 16 bit at zero, meaning we're in low frequency mode, that's fine. And I, my integer portion of the divider is eight. So I would put that in the baud rate control register. And then I have two modulation settings <clears throat> and I would put in the first register, I'm not using it because I'm in low frequency mode. And then in the secondary modulation register, I'd put D6. And if I did all that, I would still get a little bit of error, but it wouldn't be as bad. <laughs> okay, so you look at this table and you're like, I can't even function. Look at how many values are in here. This is ridiculous. Because you, even if you're in one megahertz, you're like, well, this is so confusing because I have a megahertz and then I can have an option where 9,600. Some of these settings don't work. So here's what I did for you. <clears throat> I went and pulled out all the settings that work for our MSP430 FR2355. We only have two clocks. We have A clock and we have SM clock. They're only going to be either 32K or one megahertz. There are only these four baud rate settings that I can get using A clock. And to achieve them, I use these settings. There's only one of them, which is 1200, <clears throat> when I'm running an A clock, off A clock, that puts me into the high frequency or the oversampling mode. And I have to put these values into, uh, I have to put these values in the modulation. So I put this divider ratio into BR, and then what happens here, and, and these are, they're confusing. Not, you're not gonna lie to you. <laughs> these next ones, Here's the settings you put into your prescaler and notice that we're not in the oversampling mode. <clears throat> and then down here, you put this. The reason that it's kind of confusing is when you go into oversampling mode, the value you put in the 
the baud rate registered isn't the integer portion of the divider. Notice that if I came over here and I said, what is 32K divided by 2400? So let's, let's I come over here and I'm, in, I'm gonna be in normal mode, like low frequency mode. And I said, I want 32768 uh, divided by 2400, I'd get 13.65. And that makes sense because I put 13 in there. Same thing, if I divided 32K by 4800, I'd get six point something. 32K divided by 9600, I'd get three. But for some reason, if I come in here, if I go 32768 uh, and I divided it by 1200, I get 27.3. Well, that number is above 16. And per our guidance from the monster data sheet, I am supposed to not use low frequency mode. So if I go back up here, if I go back up here, that number is greater than 16. So now it tells me to set the bit, the OS 16 bit to a one to say I'm in oversampling mode and then go down to the table and figure out what values to use. So if I come down here, I finally come into this table and I'm at the value, the example we just did, 32 is what our clock is, baud rate was 1600. It's saying, you know what you're gonna do? Set the OS 16 bit, put one into the baud rate control register and then put this value in the first stage modulation register and this value in the second stage modulation register. So here's the summary of this. This video showed you how to calculate the values to put into the modulation registers and the prescaler values. But it becomes a little bit more complicated because it isn't always the divider ratio that you put in the modulation, or the BR register, the baud rate prescaler register. It depends what the integer value is. So to end this, I went and pulled out all the possible baud rates that you can achieve for the two clocks on our MCU, and I give you the settings. So when you actually go to implement this, choose a value from here, and then just stick these settings in all the appropriate registers and voila, you got the right baud rate. <laughs> I know this is a, a kind of a long way around to get to this table, but I wanted to explain to you where these values come from because it drives me nuts when people just say, oh, put these values in these registers and it'll work. I wanna know where they came from. And now you do. <laughs> all right, that's it. Go ahead and uh, support my channel by subscribing and goodbye.